Okay, well here it is. We've got the Anycubic Mega Zero converted to run a heated bed and I'm running an Anycubic Ultra Base. So let me give you a quick walkthrough and demonstration. I added a 24 volt power supply and a 3D printed enclosure. Power in, switch. When the switch is activated, it turns on the power supply, which not only feeds 24 volts to a MOSFET through the red wire, it also has an IEC 320 um, female connector that plugs in here and then goes female to male into the original power brick that still sends the 12 volts to the controller. So it all turns on with a single switch. 3D printed a MOSFET case that holds the MOSFET and in here is a voltage booster. So I, um, in the previous video I showed how to solder the two wires to the board. I've got those running into this case, soldered into the voltage booster. All the excess wire is coiled up in here and then it runs and wires into the MOSFET. The thermistor wire runs through the case and it all runs neatly through there. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. Go ahead and preheat for PLA. And obviously you can see the uh, bed temperature is going up. So I did do a PID calibration for the bed. Uh, look up uh, Marlin PID calibration. Make sure you uh, do that and make the changes to the firmware. So that way uh, whatever bed you choose works. I'll probably share the numbers I ended up with if you're going to run a 24 volt setup with the Anycubic Ultra Base. Should be the same or should be fairly close. Let's go ahead and try to print something. So the only thing I want to change, I'm going to redo the layout of the power supply brick. I'm going to put the power supply over the top of the extrusion because it's really not in the way. So it's not hanging off so far to the side. Um, I do have a different MOSFET case printed up for the Anycubic or Tri-Gorilla MOSFET, but Amazon lost it. So my backup was this um, yeah, the FSY ETC MOSFET. It still accepts a 5-volt uh, signal. So you want to go to this port right here this one would be if it's like a ramps 1.4 controller and then make sure you set this jumper to whatever voltage either 12 or 24 based on what your heated bed is but pretty simple and again I shared the files on Thingiverse for that case So far so good that uh, initial, uh, initial bed layer looks perfect, the adhesion looks great, bed is definitely uh, doing its thing. After the pit tuning the temperature of the bed stays pretty stable. So we're going to call this project successful. I'm going to do some long-term testing. I'm going to try to run this machine uh, pretty much all day long for the next couple days and see if there's any kind of failures, but I'll be sure to update you guys in the next video. I did order a full replacement board um, that I 
um, will probably still implement. Uh, I have an idea where just uh, mounting the stock case by moving it up higher, switch this plug to here and move this up and have a box that would actually just screw into the bottom of it which would allow more room to mount a new board. So I'm going to play around with that and see if I can come up with another solution because right now I don't see a way to add auto bed leveling which this size machine I don't think you really need it especially running the ultra base which I've had great success with these being completely flat. Absolutely perfect layer adhesion. It's doing its thing, so we're gonna call it a video and uh, look for more content. I plan on doing a lot more 3D printer related videos. I've got a couple new model machines on the way that I'm gonna be doing some reviews on, so I'm really uh, gonna branch out and start doing some 3D printer content. Still gonna do my uh, normal CNC machining content as well that I've been doing for my existing followers. So uh, hopefully you guys can uh, learn something from each other by watching my videos. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe and like, and we'll talk to you again soon.